What's up guys, Dan Blewett here. So number one, if you don't already, I highly encourage you, hit that red subscribe button on my YouTube page and subscribe to my channel. So every week I'm gonna put out new videos. It's gonna be mental stuff, physical stuff, drills, pitching mechanics, strength conditioning exercises, arm care. If you're a pitcher, you're a coach, you're a parent, you really wanna understand the game, I'm really gonna help break it down for you. So subscribe, you're gonna be notified right away and I highly recommend you do it. So today I wanna to briefly talk about long toss. And I've had a long career and I've had a lot of injuries and I've had a long relationship with long toss. So I wanna give you a couple different sides of it because when I grew up, I loved long toss. I would go out with my dad, with my buddies, we would just chuck the ball and I had a good arm as a kid and I just loved to air it out. I loved playing the outfield, I loved hosing kids from the plate. Everything about putting some air onto the ball appealed to me. And I credit some of my naturally good pitching mechanics because pitching lessons weren't a thing when I was a kid. Uh, they're a thing now, but they really weren't a thing then. Um, they, they became a thing later, but I feel like long toss benefited me in the following way. When you have to throw uphill, when you're reaching up with your shoulders, your shoulders are always gonna match the angle that you throw at. So if I'm throwing it up at a 20 degree angle or a 30 degree angle, uh, my shoulders are gonna match up there. And when my shoulders match up, it teaches me naturally to kind of lead with my hip and to get my back knee in before driving uphill. I see a lot of pitchers that have poor front sides, they end up downhill on the mound, they have sloppy front shoulders, and they don't use their body very well. And I think when you long toss, especially at a young age, I think it helps that because throwing uphill requires uphill shoulders, and you're required to have uphill shoulders to resist the downhill slope of a mound. So that's one of the big benefits, and I'm a huge believer in that. However, research has come out, and anecdotally, my elbow did not handle long toss after my Tommy John surgeries. The ASMI came out with research and they kind of found that throwing uphill beyond, I think, 180 feet starts to add more stress to the elbow. Whether, I know this is a kind of a more of an emotional issue than a, than a uh, scientific issue for a lot of people because people are very pro long toss or anti long toss. And a lot of it's just an emotional anecdotal feel they have about it. Some people just love it and they refuse to accept that maybe it puts more stress on their arm. Either way, you should make the choice that's right for you. But you should know that the research has shown that throwing uphill at long distances, especially with very high arc, puts more stress on your elbow. And after my second Tommy John, as a guy with an elbow that was different and, and just scarred up and cut up and you know not the same, I couldn't long toss anymore. If I threw uphill, my elbow hurt, right? So sometimes when a, when a car is not right or a machine's not right it's sensitive to all the little things now right when it's not brand new anymore it's sensitive and with my elbow not being brand new like very not brand new I could tell the long toss wasn't right for me anymore and that was just a personal choice so again it's up to you it's your career you should choose what you want to do if long toss is a part of it I think anything in moderation can be okay within reason some things in moderation are not okay right but consider the idea that long toss might not be essential to you and so as a lifetime long tosser, and I've heard this from lots of different people, like, oh, my team wouldn't let me long toss because some major league teams only let you go out to 120 feet. Players go, oh, they wouldn't let me long toss and my arm fell apart. And I think BS. You can do anything you put your mind to as an athlete. And if you say, I can't succeed on the mound because I'm not allowed to long toss, that's your mental fragility letting you defeat yourself. I was not capable of long tossing after my second Tommy John surgery. And I didn't long toss very much after my first. And uh, I had to adapt and learn to be just as good, if not better. And I got better every year to the last year of my career. Um, I got better every year despite having limitations, despite having constraints, despite not being able to do some of the things that I could do when I was a younger kid. So do not let someone say, if you can't long toss, then your arm's not gonna be healthy. You, you won't be able to stretch it out. You won't be able to, to, to free your arm and do the things you used to do. You can do anything you want to do. So if you can only throw 120 feet or 150 feet or 180 feet, whatever it is, if you're constrained in some way, whether it's by injuries or by pain or by your team, figure it out, find a way to be great. You can do it. You do not have to long toss to be successful. If long tossing makes you better, I'm 100% for it. But I do not want people to think that I have to do this, I have to do that, or I can't succeed unless I do that. You can find a way to do whatever it is you need to do. Make it a personal choice, make an, informed, make an informed choice for you, but at the end of the day, if you have some constraints and some limitations, whether again, it's your team or your body, whatever, 
figure it out, tough it out mentally, and don't let it be a handicap. Don't let it be an excuse. You can succeed no matter what limitations are placed upon you.